Buenos dias y bienvenidos de nuevo. Welcome to Foreign Language Education Tech Tips. Specifically, I'm working in a Spanish classroom, but these are applicable in any foreign language classroom. On today's video, we are going to talk about Google Voice and how we can use Google Voice to create a mode of communicating similar to a digital language lab with some limitations. I work with those limitations, however, since Google Voice is free and very easy to use for both teachers and students. Before I walk you through the setup process, let me give you a basic introduction as to how you will be using Google Voice. After this video, you will be able to assign students a question, a list of questions, or a dialogue assignment that students will call you and answer orally in a digital voicemail box. It's very similar to email, but it's a digital recording of their voice. You can then grade students based on the grammatical accuracy of their answers and their pronunciation. This is the most basic use of Google Voice which I'm introducing to you today. There are more in-depth and advanced applications of Google Voice, but I will be covering those examples in separate videos later on. So, if that sounded like something that you would use, let's get started. Step 1. You need to have a Google account. If you don't have a Google account, now is the time to pause the video, make one, and rejoin us once you're logged in. All my other Google fanatics, go to google.com or any Google app such as Gmail or The Drive and make sure you are logged in. You can double check that your information or profile picture is in the top right corner to guarantee that you're logged in. If not, you will see a blue sign in button up there to log in. Use that, log in, and let's move forward. After logging in, go to the address bar and visit voice.google.com. You can keep the HTTPS, but you do not need to put in www. And here we are. You need to click the blue Get Google Voice button, and you will notice three options, iOS, Android, and a web-based version. For simplicity, we will only explore the web-based version today. You can explore the iOS and Android version on your own if you're interested later on. Welcome to Google Voice. Click the blue Continue button acknowledging that you accept the Terms of Service and Privacy policy. You will start by choosing a Google Voice number. You don't get to pick the actual digits, but you do get to pick your city so your number has a local area code. You can either type your city in the box or click the option down below. I'll click the Windy City, Chicago, Illinois today. Right away, you can see Google has three suggested numbers. If you scroll down and click Load More, Google will provide you with some more options. In all honesty, your Google Voice number does not matter. Unless you see a number suggestion that really catches your eye, all the numbers are the same. I'll go ahead and take the first option. After selecting your number, you will need to link your Google Voice number with a personal landline or cell phone number. You do need to have immediate access to that number, but it's okay to use a personal phone because students will never have access to this number. So, you need to click Next to link your personal phone number. I'm going to use my cell phone because I prefer verifying via text as opposed to a phone call. As you can see, I'm blurring out my phone number because I also enjoy my privacy. After you input it, click send code. Shortly, your cell phone will receive a six digit verification code from Google. I just received mine, so I'll type it in. 680630 and click verify. Congratulations, your personal phone number and Google Voice number have been linked. Click finish. And one final hooray about your Google Voice number. Click finish again and we'll get down to business. Welcome to your Google Voice home. This is the screen you will now see every time you come to Google Voice or voice.google.com. Let's take a quick tour. On the far left column of the screen, you will see your three main categories. On the top, we have text messages. On the middle, we have phone calls. And on the bottom, we have voicemails. After clicking on each category, your messages, missed calls, and voicemails will populate in the center column. The large column on the right will populate with full messages and voicemail transcriptions when they are selected in the column to the left. The three dots on the bottom and the three lines at the top will take you to the main menu with more options. So let's optimize our accounts. Click the three dots to go to the main menu, scroll down and click on the gear or the settings menu. The first thing you want to do is turn on the do not disturb. By default, when students call your Google Voice number, 
it will forward the call to your linked personal phone number. We clearly don't want this. By enabling the Do Not Disturb, students' calls will be automatically sent to your Google Voice mailbox. To enable the Do Not Disturb, click this toggle button right here. The next thing you need to consider is whether you want an email notification every time you receive a message or voicemail to the Google Voice number. I personally think this is a nuisance, so I turn all my email notifications off. You must do this individually for messages, calls, and voicemails. If at any time you want to change your linked personal phone number, do not disturb or notification settings, this can be done at any time you just go back to the settings via the main menu. Now, let's go back and give your Google Voice a test run. I'll model a basic use of Google Voice in the classroom. Let's take a look at this model Google Voice assignment I've given my students. Besides answering questions, I require that students introduce themselves in the target language before answering the questions. So for this assignment, students must introduce themselves by name, tell me when they have Spanish class, what period of the day, say the date, and then complete the dialogue. In this dialogue, students must say hello, tell me where they went last weekend, what they did there, provide a reciprocating question asking me what I did last weekend, and then say goodbye. So, let me show you how this works on both ends. Here's my cell phone, which we will pretend is the student's cell phone. He or she will open their dialer, call my number, and now I'll model the student's phone call. The Google subscriber you have called is not available. Please leave a message after the tone. Hola maestro, me llamo Miguel. Hoy es jueves, el 2 de octubre. Yo fui al parque la semana pasada con mis amigos. Jugamos al fútbol ahí. ¿Qué hizo usted la semana pasada? Adiós, chao, hasta mañana. Now, let's take a look how it will appear on the teacher's end. After receiving a call and voicemail, you can refresh your Google Voice account and you will see a new message in the voicemail box. Select that message and you will notice a transcript in the right column. Usually this transcript is not accurate and pretty funny to read given the student's pronunciation. You can click on the play button down at the bottom and listen to the message. Hola maestro, me llamo Miguel. Hoy es jueves, el dos... After or during listening, you can rewind, fast forward, pause, una pasada con mis amigos, jugamos al... and replay the message. After listening, you can either delete the message or keep it in your inbox. I prefer to keep the message for a couple of days in case students want to hear their recording or dispute their grades that they earned. I use this simple rubric to grade students on their pronunciation and their grammatical accuracy. You're welcome to download it for free along with the sample assignment. If you enjoyed this video, please check back soon for more tech tips and more advanced ways to use Google Voice and to modify its uses in your foreign language classroom.